Welcome back to another episode of Consciously Clueless. I'm your host, Carly, and I'll be your guide on this journey from consciousness to cluelessness and back around again. Thanks for joining me for another Sunday solo episode. Whether it's Sunday night and you're getting ready for your week, Monday morning and you're on your way to work, or whatever day this podcast has found you, I'm really glad you're here. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or is it preventing you from achieving your goals? By now you all know that therapy is an important part of my self-care. It has truly been a game changer in every aspect of my life. BetterHelp is the largest online counseling platform worldwide. They are changing the way people get help with facing life's challenges by providing convenient, discreet, and affordable access to a licensed therapist. BetterHelp makes professional counseling available anytime, anywhere, through a computer, tablet, or smartphone. You can start communicating within 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. And I have a special offer for you. Visit BetterHelp.com Carly and join the over million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. By using this code, you get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash Carly. Take care of yourself today. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this podcast. Hello, everybody. I'm very excited because today I want to talk a little bit about bus life. I have been learning so much ever since, well, ever since purchasing this bus, really, but ever since living in here for the summer, moving in, starting to get more like plumbing and electric done, and yeah, there's just so much to learn. But there are some kind of other things I've been learning, too, that of course become metaphorical or ways to think about life differently. Of course, of course, it always does, right? So I thought today I would talk about three ways that the bus is teaching me to live my best life. So far, obviously more to come, but these are three that I've been thinking about a lot. So I thought I would share them with you all. So, so if you somehow haven't heard, I'm living in a short bus that was turned into a tiny home on wheels And I've been working on it for over a year now, so I've settled in in the last few weeks of being in here for the next few months, so that's kind of just setting the stage. I don't have running water yet. I don't have uh, total plumbing yet, but, you know, it's a work in progress. So, three ways the bus is teaching me to live my best life. Number one, I've talked about this before, but I think it is not going to be surprising what this first one is. You don't need much stuff. (laughs) You do not need that much shit in your life, like physical shit. I already started to downsize in the last few years, really, and tried to live more minimally. I would never say minimalist, but minimally. And I've just been kind of on that journey for a while, getting rid of things when I can. I, when I moved into a tiny home, I definitely did that, but still had, you know, a fair share of stuff. And moving into the bus, I got rid of a few more boxes of stuff. And now I feel like right now I look around and, you know, not every single thing I own is in this bus. I will totally admit that. I've got a couple boxes other places. But when I look around right now, it is really like, okay, this is the stuff I need. I've got my books. I've got my desk and podcasting stuff. I've got my favorite kitchen stuff. I've got my clothes that I need. I just look around and I'm like, yeah, this is the stuff I need. Nothing I see anymore is really anything I don't need or use or love. Because of course, some things are just in our lives because we love them and they give us joy. That's their purpose. You know, I'm talking like a picture or a plaque that has a cute saying on it or something. Um, Anyway, you get the idea. You don't need that much. I remember hearing once a long time ago, this woman realizing she should get rid of stuff. I've probably already said this on the podcast, but how she realized she looked at her closet, you know, there was like 40 pairs of jeans or whatever. And she was like, wow, you know, 
you can only wear one of these at a time. And I'm not saying that you only need like one pair of pants for your entire life. If you can get by with that and that's your choice, that's great. I need a few more than that or I choose to have more than that. However, it's just an example of, you know, we have so much stuff and you can't use it all or wear it all or whatever it is at once. So you probably don't need that much of it. And I had that in mind when I was downsizing and it made a huge difference. So number one, you just don't need that much. And notice I'm saying need. I'm probably interchangeably saying them, but that was an intentional need. Like these are things that I need for me to live my comfortable life. And everyone defines that differently, of course. But it has really made me look at stuff differently. I need to focus on making sure I'm talking into the microphone because as I'm talking about it, I'm in the bus looking around like, yeah, yeah, this is my stuff. Okay, that's number one. Number two, put things away immediately, otherwise known as deal with things immediately. Okay, y'all, I have a tiny sink. If I have a couple dishes, that's full. If I get groceries and I have a bag of groceries, I have to put stuff away immediately because there's no room. If I do my laundry, or when I do my laundry, not if, when I do my laundry, I have to put it away immediately. There is nowhere for it to really sit. It is such a good lesson that when you come home, instead of dumping all your shit somewhere, throwing things here, there, and everywhere, and then it just kind of piles and it makes you more stressed, but you don't want to deal with it, and you've been in that pattern. I'm sure you can relate. If you walk in hang up your purse somewhere or put away your wallet somewhere, hang up your jacket, get rid of all the stuff in your lunchbox or whatever the situation is for you. You get it. If you take care of all of that immediately, it is so good for your brain. Like not only is it physically helpful because there's not shit everywhere, but it's so nice to look around and it is just clear counters because you have to deal with things when you live in a tiny bus immediately or you would just be around piles of stuff very quickly. So I think that is something that I will never not have in my brain. And I already kind of had that habit, but it is even more crucial now. Like you can't really let anything go when you're in this small of a space. You have to deal with it. And it just ends up working out so much better because, well, then things are done and it just looks good and feels good and cross that stuff off your list. It doesn't pile up because you kind of just have to deal with it in here. You know, when you're privileged to have extra rooms and all this stuff, we just start to collect things because we have the space to put it. And when you don't have the space to put it, you just can't collect as much, which I'm kind of loving. Okay. The last, but certainly not least, because this is one that's been on my mind a lot again lately. Having this bus, being in this bus, has fully reminded me and solidified, or I don't even know the right words, it has shown me that you can manifest whatever you want in your life. So let me explain, because that sounded really corny, But if you are a fan of the podcast, you know I've been talking about manifesting. And all that means is a fancy way of saying you create your own reality with intention. That's manifesting because we create our own reality every second, but oftentimes we're doing it with no intention. So when I decided I wanted a bus and started looking, nothing was really panning out. I was looking in all these other states. I was thinking of driving somewhere or flying somewhere and then driving the bus back and it was starting to get so complicated and they were not in my price range and the ones that were in my price range were rust buckets to say the least and I just was not finding, it just didn't feel like it was going to happen and then I thought, you know, how crazy would it be? If there was just something in my hometown, like what if there was just something in the area? Because I was looking so far away. What if there was something in the area? And I put something on my local sell and swap. Just like if anybody has any ideas, give me a call. I'm looking to make a tiny home on wheels looking for a bus. And somebody texted me and said, I think the school's getting rid of one. 
So I got a bus totally within my price range that was in great shape. That was literally three miles down the road from me at the local school. I mean, how amazing is that? It just like, it was like boom, 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 stars aligned. It was all happening so fast in such a good way because it was just like, yep, okay, you asked for it and this is exactly what you wanted. And it felt like it was going to work out. It felt good. And so I went towards what felt good and it worked. I got this beautiful, still yet to be named bus. And one of the tools I've been using to remind myself to be intentional and to ask for what I want and remind myself that I can create my own reality is um, I've done some workshops and then some classes with Katie Jones. I interviewed her on the podcast, Will Manifester. She's amazing. One of the things I've done with her, I did a New Year's vision board or phone background uh, ceremony or intention setting space. So we created these images that I still have in the back of my phone and my computer background that are to remind us of things we've manifested. So then we can remember that we are powerful and then the things that we are looking to manifest. So I see this picture, this little picture of the bus every day. And I think, yeah, I manifested that. And it just gives me all this confidence. So I think that it's been a good reminder and a good thing to point to. So if you have an experience where you're like, I created that and it was exactly what I wanted, keep reminding yourself of that. Like put that in front of your face so you can remember that you can do that in all these other situations too. It wasn't a fluke. It wasn't just an accident. You got really intentional and you did something right. So figure out what you did and do that again and remind yourself. And that has been the last lesson for this episode at least of what the bus is teaching me and and she sure is teaching me a lot i can say that for sure a quick side note if you have any ideas for what to name this bus because i'm really struggling please let me know and i will gladly take your suggestions okay so those have been the three kind of biggest lessons i've been learning so far just in terms of life stuff like you know like i said in the beginning like course, it relates to life, and it's a big metaphor, and everything is. That's everything. Don't worry, as I keep learning things, this bus life is teaching me. I will keep you updated. I want to hear if any of these lessons resonated with you, if these have been things on your mind, where they've come from, or maybe there's other big ones on your mind right now. You know I love to hear from you. Thanks for listening to another episode of Consciously Clueless. If you're enjoying this podcast, hit subscribe wherever you're listening. If you want to help me get this into the ears of more listeners, send it to a friend, text it to a family member, share on social media. Whatever you can do really helps me out. To be read on air as a review of the week, head over to Apple Podcasts, leave a review, and I might read your review on air next week. If you haven't joined the Patreon community, head over to patreon.com slash consciously Carly and check it out. I know you're going to love it. And last but certainly not least, head over to consciouslycarly.com slash courses and check out the new self-love reset course. Until next time.